A pleasant good morning to everyone and welcome. Welcome once again to another edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Yours truly, Coles Brown, joined by Coach Van Petaway. I simply term him the Coles Brown Show basketball analyst along with regular guest Charles Edmund of the Alcorn State Radio Network. Guest menu for today, of course, Charles Edmund, Coach Van Penaway, A.D. Willa Brown joins us in our uh, number two, and Coach Mark Frederick, Southern University, new offensive coordinator, he is scheduled to join us, and we'll have a chance and opportunity to talk with him about simply coming back to Southern University. Here's simply what's trending on the show, and then we'll get right into the conversation. Uh, SWAC releases their 2024 conference football schedule, and uh, we'll have an opportunity to, to put up uh, at least Southern University's 2024 conference schedule. Southern University releases the, both the softball and baseball 2024 uh, schedule. It is interesting, uh, to say the least. And then finally, simply what's trending, Southern University basketball, both women and men's uh, basketball team. They make the shortest trip in the conference geographically. Oh, but to a tough, tough place. Alcorn State in Larman, uh, Mississippi. And Southern University hires Mark Frederick. He'll just make the uh, transition from Prairie View a and to Southern University. That's what's trending. Introduce the guest, Coach Petaway. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Carlos. I uh, hope everything is going well. We're looking forward to another great day. And uh, Alabama, Alabama A&M has a tough matchup this weekend. Florida A&M Rattlers are in town. And so I'm looking forward to the game. One of the games that we will talk about, of course, we'll have our swag basketball report as well. And with that, We'll recap games last Saturday and Monday. Get you ready for uh, Saturday's and Monday's games. Some interesting games, some upsets to talk about. At yeah. least I term them upsets. And um, I kind of penciled in some of my notes who I'm going to focus on as far as uh, uh, basketball. And, and, and the, we'll give you uh, the standings. Very interesting, uh, Coach Petaway. But introduce Charles Edmonds. Charles, good morning. Yeah. Hey, hey, Carlos. Hey, uh, Chief Stewart. Um, Carlos Brown's not coming. Um, you can uh, you can cancel your uh, your escort. He will not be coming. Uh, 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 so uh, we we appreciate your service. Thank you very much. Good morning, Carlos. How you doing, man? How you doing? Just trying to, just, just, just trying to that for you. I like that, Charles. Like yeah, that. Uh, hey, the call came in right on time, brother. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I'm not gonna make it, but boy, uh, the the memories at Alcorn. Let me tell you, um, beautiful campus, nice people, but boy, it. I've had some tough times. Going, uh, going yes, up Carlos, Carlos, uh -huh. speak for yourself. They're nice to you. They're yeah. not very nice to me. <laughs> oh yeah, look when, when they're able to be uh, victorious, and you know, coming up there, swag football championships. Um, also, when uh, Lynn Tillery was a running back at Southern University football, uh, Coach Dawson Molins had that one victory against Alcorn, and I was uh, able to witness that. But other than that, like I said, the people are very nice, treated you very well, but it, it's just a tough place to play, and uh, we'll, we'll look into it. Uh, Southern women and men's basketball um, getting to Alcorn uh, State. Um, the last time we talked, guys, well, I had the opportunity to talk. Um, Southern was going up to Gramlin State. And, uh, you know, I talked about it. That is a tough place. Uh, thanks for the text, Coach <laughs> Petaway. Yes. Um, Southern's men basketball team. Well, let's 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 back up. Southern's women. It it wasn't even close. It you know in the first few minutes you could tell this is going to be a long game, and that's what you saw. 
uh, Grambling State women took care of business in the men's game. And look, I, I wasn't really supposed to talk about this, but uh, we weren't uh, we weren't able to visit with you last week. So I got to get this off my chest, guys. <laughs> Southern went to Grambling. It was a tale of two halves. Southern at one point was up by 17. Coach Petaway, Grambling State went to a zone. Yep. That couldn't have. And Joseph was on fire, but they that zone was too tough to overcome. And the Jaguars lost 79 to 62. Have you ever been a part of a game like that when you're leading by 15, 17 points, maybe? And I think 17 points. And then you lose by 17. Wow. No, not not. I, I mean, I've had big leads and lost a game, but not not by the margin of the lead that I had. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, I think one time against Alcorn, we had a big lead. I ended up losing the game. Uh, and then I, I know for a fact the same thing happened against Alabama State once uh, with Lewis Jackson. I think I was up by 16 uh, at halftime, and I ended up losing the game, you know, but it was only by one or two. But, that you know, that that's a big discrepancy. And a lot, and a lot of that had to do with uh, – the defense, that zone, the zone was a good matchup. Uh, it took Joseph out of what he was doing in mm -hmm. that first half. And uh, they just played, man. And, and when when you have a rivalry, stuff like that's going to happen, man. Stuff yeah. like that's going to happen. You know, the crowd got into it, and uh, it was just it was just Grambling's day. Yeah, and, um, you know, of course, in the day – we're in the day of social media, Charles, and, boy <laughs> – <laughs> I, I, you know what? I, I get to a point now. Sometimes I just have to not get into too much of the social media. There's a good point to it and a bad. Way. But the the fans, uh, we're we're in the moment now where they let you know. You know, you could win five or six in a row, guys. But boy, you lose a type of game like that, then it's like, don't question. The season, it's still a lot to play for, right? And, yeah. and those things, those things happen. Not, not, I'm not saying all of the fans are like that, but uh, the society now is you got to win quickly. And boy, a, a loss, it seems like it's magnified. So I said all of that to say this, guys, it's disappointing, but it did not tinker with my thought process to say, hey, throw in the towel. No, it's still a lot to play for. And when we look at that swag men's basketball race, I mean. I, it's about six or seven teams right. that, that, that that still have a shot. But anyway, Charles, go ahead. Well, yeah, there are losses, and then there are really difficult, brutal losses. You go to the Hobby Arena, and you're up 17, and you lose by 17. That's a 34-point swing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's probably just ticked a lot of people off. And I think if any team that has a lead like that on the road in a tough place and loses like that, that's that's going to happen. So that's I mean, that's highly unusual, you know, and Coach Petaway referenced to the Alcorn game. He had a 26-point lead on Dave Whitney at home one year, and the Braves came back and won, and people were upset about that. But, you know, I, I, the Hobby Arena is a tough place to play and win, mm -hmm. but UAPB went in there and spanked Grambling recently and, and that right. at home. And, and so that, that tells you right there just how difficult this race is. And you talked about the standings, Carlos. I got the standings here. You've got – Eight teams separated by one game on the mm -hmm. men's side. Mm -hmm. Southern, Bama State, Grambling, Texas Southern, Bethune-Cookman, UAPB, Jackson, and Alcorn. Yep. You got eight teams separated by one game. You got some five and two, some four and three. So there's going to be a lot of movement here in the next few weeks. And so I think, you know, yes, you got to put that game in the rearview mirror. It doesn't define anything right now. And if you don't win the regular season, you lose by a game, you might look back on it. But you still got 11 games left to play. And, you know, but these games coming up here are big for Southern because Southern mm -hmm. goes to Jackson. Jackson's in mm -hmm. New York right now. Jackson's on a three, well, I don't, I don't think they're on a three game losing streak, but losing they're streak, struggling yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. They're injured. They're banged up. Now, coach is not, Mo Williams is not using that as an excuse, but they're going to be travel weary coming back home from New York. So Southern University has an opportunity to kind of stick around. But, you know, I think this race is going to be really intriguing down the stretch. And you got eight teams within one game. So there's going to be a lot of movement. 
Coach Pettaway, he's absolutely a uh, 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 right. And, and and quickly back to yeah, those type of games happen. You even look in the NBA, you have these kind of like just you know losses that are huge. But from a, a, sta- a fan standpoint, I, I think you absorb it. Yeah, you talk about it. It's bad, and you move on. You know, I, I think players have to do that, and, and coaches. Um, but to to you know, just I, I just don't like sometimes you panic after one loss. A loss is a loss, whether they lost by one on the last second shot, which. I think hurts even worse or the way that it happened. They lost by 17 by being up um, by a lot. Yeah. Uh, Carrie says injuries or not, no excuses for us losing to fam. You Chuck. Good morning. Chuck checking in from Monroe. Well, I guess it's very competitive guys. Yeah. It, it's very competitive and, and uh, fans are emotional and a, they have a right to be emotional. They really do. But stay focused if you're on that team. Players, a lot to play for in this uh, basketball season. And then on the women's side, we'll just simply say Jackson State has – they they're tightening. They're tightening that grip. And they're uh, they're undefeated. Are, are they undefeated? I believe they yes. are. Yeah, yeah okay. they are. Yeah, they're seven and zero. They're seven and zero. Sure. Oh. Right, and then you got Brandon and Arkansas Pine Bluff, and uh, they're tied for second at five and two. But Thune Cookman's in in the hunt at four and three, along with Prairie View, and then of course uh, your Jaguars are four and three. So uh. you know, right now it's it's if if they if they don't do something with Jackson State, everybody's going to be scrambling to fight for that number two seed. Because Grambling State, right? Uh, Jackson State, right now, they just look strong. They look strong. Well, I'm still going to uh, put in my, my, my Jaguars. They they've been struggling on the women's side, you know. But hey, kudos to UAPB. They came in and beat Southern seventy four to fifty nine, and then went to Grambling State and won. So I would say UAPB a strong. Number two, because you know they they hit a little stretch where they got upset, right? In the right. basketball games, but JSU one, UAPB two, and then fill in the blanks for the rest. I agree with that. I totally agree. I mean, Jackson is is not only winning, but they're winning in dominant fashion, something that they've done in the regular season over the last however many years. So Jackson State right now is the team to beat as far as the regular season. UAPB, you talk about their hiccup. They lost to Texas Southern. And so, you know, you got to look back at that. But I I think, you know, when you look at Jackson State, they're the cream of the crop, UAPB number two. And I do think three through six, three through seven, you can kind of shake it up, put those teams in the bag and pull one out, and you you wouldn't be wrong. I mean, because you got Bethune-Cookman, Prairie View, Southern University, even Alabama A&M and FAMU at three and four. FAMU's got a first-year coach. And I was in mm-hmm. Tallahassee last week, and I'm going to say this. FAMU, that team is going to be coming. Their coach is very energetic, very passionate, and she, she's she got that team playing hard. And if they get it rolling, and I think come tournament time, I think they could be a tough out. Right. Well, and, then, you know, what? to me, on the women's side, I think Grambling – being in second place, that's to me, that's a surprise team on the women's side because if you remember now in preseason, they were picked eighth in the yeah. preseason poll, and here they are uh, at, at a strong two. Uh, every, you know, everybody's still trying to taste Jackson State, but I think they've done a remarkable job down at Gramlin to, uh, to be where they are. I think I have to put them at number three. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, two, three. We do know that JSU, of course, as you guys have stated, a dominant number one. I think it's for positioning uh, for the rest of the uh, conference season. And before you know it, guys, it's going to be March. It's going to yeah. be March very quick. So you're in the crux of a uh, some uh, competitive uh, races. Uh, Southern University uh, on the uh, women's side. No, they, they they've been struggling. They've been struggling. 
and uh, you know they split at home against uh, UAPB, and then they came back to defeat Mississippi Valley State. As I pull it up here, yeah, they beat uh, Mississippi Valley sixty-four to forty-five. So they did bounce back in a big yeah. way. A nineteen-point win, and then they lost to Arkansas Pine Bluff seventy-four to 59. So uh, when you look at it, Jaguars, I, I see they shot 36% from the field for the game. Um, from behind the arc, they were 30%, 3 of 10. 33 free throws they shot. They made 26, 78.8%. But wow, a 15-point loss in uh, the Jaguar Nation. Uh, basically, we're asking what is going on with uh, the Southern women's basketball team, but they were able to bounce back as you stated against uh, Mississippi Valley State. Now they're going to go see. And when you're on the road, it doesn't matter if all corn is seventh, eighth or ninth. To me, it's always tough on the road. So mm -hmm. this could be a point where the Southern women's basketball team can make a statement. Now, of course, in, you would like for them to be able to win both games on the road, but look, it's going to be tough. Alcorn State today and then going to Jackson State. A split is all would be great. Great, great would be winning both, but that's going to be tough. So can we look for a split if you're a member of the Jaguar Nation for this, uh, uh, this weekend? But at all court state, Charles, Southern women, um, historically, they've had tough games there, and they've had problems. I expect nothing less. It is tough to win on the road in this conference, all college basketball conference. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a huge game for Southern, but it's an even bigger game for all court. Right now, we are kind of on the outside looking in as far as the top eight is concerned. Um, if if Southern doesn't win this game, it's going to be tough to win in Jackson. So the question is, will Southern come Tuesday be on the north end of the bracket, which means top four, or will they be on the south end of the bracket, which means outside the top four? And, and, and I think that's kind of where things are as far as Southern is concerned. Um, for all corn, we're just trying to stay in the conversation to make the tournament, something we haven't done in a few years. We've let some games slip away. We had a five-point lead against Bethune Cookman. Uh, I'm sorry, against FAMU last Saturday. We lost. Didn't play well against Bethune Cookman. They only got eight players, by the way. Bethune Cookman only had eight players dressed, and yet mm. they beat us. And it wasn't. It, it was a bad quarter for us. And the key for us, Carlos, we got to come out and we got to shoot the ball well, and we got to avoid getting in foul trouble because we're thin as well. We're going to get Kalen Watkins back. And so we have to play well, we have to shoot well, and we just can't we can't turn the ball over. We had 22 turnovers against Bethune Cookman. You can't, mm. you're not gonna beat anybody that way. It's just not gonna happen. Um, we're gonna get Kalen Watkins back, one of our key, one of our key players. And then the other storyline, former Lady Brave Kalo Billow, who's playing for Southern University, coming back home. So that's another little storyline to kind of follow. But this is a big game for both teams, whether we're gonna try to stay in the top eight. Or for Southern University, going to be in the top half of the bracket. Coach Fedaway is going to be tough, but if you look at it, and no disrespect, I, I, I've just stated several times that it's tough to win on the road. Out of the two games, it's probably easier, easier to one? win to win this one right. because Monday, and then of course, last year was last year. Southern knocked Jackson State out of the uh, tournament. Black Conference Tournament Championship, they're, they're going to remember that as well. Not, right, that they, the, not that they need the motivation, but hey, you're looking at 18 to 21 year old student athletes. They're going to remember. Right. I know I I would be using that. I would be using that as a coach. Uh, <laughs> you know, let, my, let my charges yeah. know, look, they ended up, they, they defeated us in the tournament. We got to be ready to play. So now if Southern's going to do anything, make a move, Today is their chance. They they got to get it done today mm -hmm. on the reservation because I, I think Monday, unless there's just a collapse by Jackson State, that that's that's the tougher of the two games. So you better try to get this one, get your split 
to today because if you lose today and and then uh mentally you may not even be ready for that game monday uh, yeah. if you lose today so they got to be ready to play and they got to put uh all their focus and emphasis on this game don't look ahead they need to take care of all corn state today and it's going to be tough now it's always yeah. tough playing on the reservation uh uh, I, I've said that for years, and you know, I never, I never got a chance to walk across that court and shake Coach Whitney's hand after I won a game. I never <laughs> beat him in that place, and that's why I took it out on the people that followed him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I took it out on the people that followed Coach Whitney because I, I, I was not very successful down there. Well, well Carlos, you- I, I will say that even after a win, it's hard on a Monday night. Yeah. You know, Prairie View's men handed Jackson State their first loss of the in conference. They come here two nights later and and barely showed up. The Braves just took it to them, and it never was even close. So these Saturday games are key, foundation foundationally, emotionally, as you get ready for Monday night. And so if if you win, you're on a high. You think you got it made, and then you get knocked off. If you lose, you're still thinking about it. And as the old adage says, Carlos, don't let a loss beat you twice. And we and we have seen that happen a few times in conference, but the Jaguars are trying to avoid it. And for the Lady Braves, it's it's desperation time. Nate Kilbert said it's desperation time. We got to get these at home. We feel like there's a pathway forward, but talking about it is not going to get it done. We got to we got to get it done on the hardwood. And it's something about those Monday night games. It's tough. Yes, it is tough because I know. Uh, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. In most cases, you play the game Saturday. In most cases, don't you immediately kind of travel to your next destination? Or do you wait till the following morning to, to, to leave? Say if you're on the road, Coach, and um, you're, at, you're at Southern University, that's Saturday. You leave that game immediately afterwards, headed to Grambling? Or did you guys, you know, wait till the next day to travel? <laughs> No, remember, you know, they changed things since I left. Uh, Alcorn right. and Southern was our game. So if, if I was at Alcorn, I went to Southern that – I went to Baton Rouge that night. But if I was playing at Southern, I didn't go to Alcorn because I had to go all the way to Vicksburg. I did not go until mm-hmm. Sunday morning. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, where, where you're located a lot of times determines where uh, – if you leave the night after the game or – uh, that that next day, but in most cases, ninety nine percent of the time, you get up the next morning and leave. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that and that's still tough, mentally, right. to get ready for that money. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. We yeah. we we've done that. Um, I mean, we haven't left after a Saturday game going to you know if, if we're playing Pine Bluff Valley, we wouldn't leave until the next day. I think right. you know most team, a lot of teams using charters, and I just think for safety purposes. Yeah, the coach would like to get to the next location that night, but it's just not, even though we got these early starts, it's a long day and it's just not practical and it's not safe really to do that. So you just stay Saturday night. And most of these two, these, these destinations are three to four hours apart from Tallahassee to Daytona is like four from Pine Bluff to Valley is two and change from Alcorn to Jackson is one and change. Now you might do the Alcorn Jackson when you might go to Jackson I think I've heard of teams that stay in Jackson, come to Alcorn and play, and then go back to Jackson that night. I've, I've heard that from some yeah. teams before. But yeah. that's probably the closest in terms of the uh, the travel partners. Right. Well, right. It, it, so, yeah, thanks for that correction. It, it So it's still it's still tough. It you is. Know, right. the, the, oh, to yeah. play on that Monday. It just seems like even from a standpoint, um, fans and alum, if, if, if you work, that Monday, you have to, and I know I used to have to, you know, you get off at 4, 4.30, and the game's at 5.30, you got to hustle, you yeah. know, to get there. And, you know, so, but, hey, you can't complain. If the players can, the student athletes can do it, and if you're working to get to those Monday night games, but uh, it, 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 it's tough. And then you also see a lot of the Saturday day games now moved up, you know, yeah, I think that was one of the best moves that the conference made in pushing mm-hmm. up those Saturday games. I just wish, which we I know we can't do this, I just wish that if they looked at the Monday games, you know, mm-hmm. if they could move those up. But that financially, that would be a good move. 
uh, yeah. to, move them up, to make them any earlier. But 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 when the conference uh, mandated that everybody move up their start times on Saturday, I think that really helped all the teams. Yeah, because you, yeah, you had more time to recover. Right. So our, team, our Monday game is at five o'clock now. We 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 went from five thirty to five. And, and part of the reason for this, Carlos, too, I think this is the underlying story. These early games, it's tough. If you if you play a 5.30 and 7.30 every swag night, it's hard to find stuff to eat at that late hour. Right, right. That yep. was a big complaint for many, 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 many a year. And so when you're playing games at 5.30 mm -hmm. by the time, unless you have food catered into the arena, which some teams do, and we have local places here that bring food to us, but it, that's been a big challenge especially on Monday nights, then on Saturdays too, if you're playing late. So by these earlier start times, by, you know, we're playing, uh, we're playing uh, at one o'clock. And so by the time you get the team off the road, mm -hmm. you, you get on the Vicksburg and Natchez, you still have time to get a good bite to eat or whatever the case. That's another reason why these early games are, are taking place. Well, I, yeah. I, 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 I see VW says he, he begs the different in the chat room, but you know what too? In Baton Rouge, I can speak for Baton Rouge. It's plenty of places to eat. Oh my God! Yeah, but Lorman is probably not as much. You go to Vicksburg, Huntsville, uh, Coach Petaway. I would think they yeah. have more yeah. of a selection yeah. to get something. So geographically, where you at as well as for. And I'm only bringing this up because Sergeant brought up about getting a uh, you know something that you know, to eat for the student athletes. And you, if you're in a place that's small or rural, there are less choices. Right. And then I think, <clears throat> Charles, one of the other things I heard, <clears throat> media-wise, <clears throat> we got more coverage when you move the times up. Yeah. Because when, when, when the games were later, a lot of times you wouldn't even get on the, on the local news, you know, if there was an overtime or if there was a real close – if the women's game was close and the men's game – you weren't gonna get on, be, yeah. you know, because it was so mm -hmm. late. So uh, I, I think uh, for all all these different reasons, that's why they moved up uh, the times. And I, and I still think it was a great move. Our fans just have to get a had to get adjusted to it. The crowds are slowly coming back, and, and I think somebody mentioned it early on here. It, the crowds were bigger when there were night games because that was an event. I know mm -hmm. here in Huntsville, if we had a night game on a Friday or a Saturday. You, you could almost guarantee uh, a sellout or almost a sellout. Uh, more people came out because it was just a big event. And then now you've seen uh, – you see smaller crowds now that you've changed the the uh, the times on the on the, sad, on the weekend games. Yeah. Well, well and, and you know, too, now that I think about it, um, and I'm going to come from the angle that if, if you work again Monday through Friday – and you've got kids, sometimes you're not able to do the things during right. the week that you can do on Saturday. And they want to they want to participate and come to the games. Like, especially the big ones, like for Southern, it's uh Grandma State, all corn. Um, you maybe can go get some 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 things done, you know, the kids a haircut or whatever, you know, do a little shopping, do a little mechanical work, and then be able to get to that. 5 30 women's game and you know 30 minutes later the men's game so you know just kind of look at it looking at it from different angles but if the games are moved up those who rely on doing some of those things on saturday that they can't do it in the week well they may make a choice i might not can make the women's game but i can get there for the men's game and i talk to fans i saw that so there's an interesting conversation um, as far as, um, you know, those game times. And I was kind of looking at, at, at attendance so far. And, uh, oh, boy, I want to say. Southern, who was, who was so I think Southern. Well, I, thought they was, I thought it was second. Somebody else was number one. I thought Jackson. 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 Jackson, Jackson. Yeah. Jackson and Southern are the, are the two top draws in the league right now. Uh, and and uh, I think I saw what somebody was saying. Should the SWAC look at uh, going away from the doubleheader? You know, some mm -hmm. some things are doing that. Like I, I think uh, um, the not the Horizon, yeah, the Horizon does it. I think uh, it closer to us, uh, not the Gulf South, but 
uh, Ohio Valley, Ohio Valley, mm-hmm. they they do that. They they're getting away from the double headers. But I'm not sure. You know that that's going to take a lot of research. I, I'm not sure that's going to that that'll work because it, for the for the female teams that are not drawing well, I, I think you just put them on an island when you do that. You need in some cases now you need the men's mm-hmm. game to bring the crowd for the women. And so I from that aspect, I know mm-hmm. when I was at a and our coaches were against it. Our female coaches did not ever want to separate the men and the women. They wanted the doubleheaders. Yeah. Because they felt like that if 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 they had to play a single game, that their student mm-hmm. athletes would not get the the full effect of the of the crowd. And they and they were against it. I don't know if that mindset has changed now, but uh-huh. when I was coaching there, they, they did not want that. They fought they fought against that. Yeah. I, I, because, I, I because almost they, can't uh, you. Oh. do you remember do you remember I'm sorry? Hey Charles, do you remember when there was a time where they wanted to start alternating the games, let the men play first and, and the mm-hmm. women play? Man, mm-hmm. our coaches went crazy about this. They said, no way. <laughs> Gender <laughs> equity. I'm sorry, Charles, go ahead. Yeah, that's that that was that was that was gender equity. That's part of the reason why that was done. Right. You know, have have the have the men play first and have the have yep. the women get that prime time. That was the I think gender equity was a lot that, that ties into it. But I if I if my guess, my opinion is that if you poll those coaches today and ask if they want to separate it, they'll probably say no. No. Yeah. I think it's still the men's game is still where it's at. And I think you know have, have the women's game come in front of that and I think we'll make a, a really good draw. So I, I, I think it, this has been talked about for a long time. I mean, I saw Brian's point on it. Mm-hmm. We've, we've cussed and discussed this issue for 25 years. And I, and I think it's probably right now, I don't see any movement on that. It'll probably be discussed here or there, but I, I don't think it will be because I think you're seeing a level of some level of success. And I think the crowds are great. The Bethune Cookman Alcorn game was a great crowd on TV the other night. Oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. was packed. It, yeah. And it was it was night. Oh, it was well, Monday night. Monday night, yeah. It was an eight o'clock game Eastern time. It was a late start, yeah. in the, but that was just due to television. You wouldn't right. normally start a game that late. But uh I think that you know, I, I don't see it changing. I think I think the coaches are happy with that format. Uh, we've talked about it, and I just don't see any separation. I don't see the synergy for it right now. Well, you know, I, here's one of the things I think. Just like this discussion is going on, you take everybody's point in a, in account, and you and you kind of look at it. I mean, we're steeped in tradition. I understand sometimes college athletics is it's changing. I think you always look and have conversations to see how you can, you know, better it. Take this point, take that point, take this point, that point. Ultimately, I know it comes down to, you know, the input of the the coaches. Um, Talk to the student athletes. Talk to your fans and alums. Like someone was making the point, you know, I guess piggyback on what I was saying. On, On Saturdays, if you have to get things done before you get to the game, you kind of knock those people out if they if if you got a 12 noon game. And I understand television dictates like HBCU go TV, but I think you always continue to look and discuss and see how you can improve. Sometimes we're steep in tradition. I understand that. But sometimes you just gotta look at what is the best way going forward that we maybe can improve it? And maybe when we talk to everybody, the decision comes to, you know, we'll keep it as is. We don't need to, but you got to have the, the, the conver- conversation. Yeah. And, and, and just like this point, then we get to a timeout. Um, locally in Baton Rouge Southern University, we, we often talk about, did they do a, a, a survey to decide, you know, what, price the tickets need to go up because you got a new complex that you 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 pay for and you got it done but you got to pay it off and so they didn't take an account they didn't do a survey to find out from the alums the supporters the fans and it kind of hurt them as far as the ticket price it kind of priced some of the fans out 
But with that being said, if they would have done a, 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 a marketing survey, it would have kind of told you some things that you could do, how much you could raise the ticket prices. And we're talking about football here. So where it, it will not uh, be a, have a negative impact on, on, on your fans. And it'll take account the economics, you know, all of that. So with this basketball, just looking at the chat room, you see the conversation that is happening. 5.30, afternoon games. But it is what it is right now. The afternoon games are here to stay. But I always look at the information. I always ask the fans, alums, to see with that information what's the best way to put out the product. Very interesting conversation about that. And I guess that all started about uh, being competitive uh, with the men's and the uh, women, uh, men's and the women's race, we'll wrap up this segment quickly, Coach Federway and Charles. Um, on the women's side, UAPB impressive last weekend to me. Not that they're not impressive before then, because they've really rebuilt that uh, program for this year. And then on the men's side, basically, we're looking at seven to eight teams that got a realistic shot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think you know, right now, to me, it's just two through two through eight right now. I mean, I think you look at Grambling at five and two, and then you got some three win teams. Two games separate six spots, so there's there could be a lot of movement. Uh, the Florida teams playing Alabama State and A and M. I mean, that's not going to be easy. Um, so I think that clearly there goes, there's going to be some movement. Jackson's at the top on the women's side, no doubt. Unless they they stub their foot, they're going to be up there, but. If you're a two seed all the way through a seven seed, you're, you're still, you know, you have a chance to finish in a high mark. And even some teams that are on the outside, like the Lady Braves, this is probably their last shot. You know, you got FAMU at seven. You got Alabama State. They've struggled. So there's still a lot of games left, a lot of movement. But And, I, and this is about as competitive, Carlos, as I can remember on both sides, men and women. There are no cupcakes whatsoever. Who thought Texas Southern was going to, and UAPB women, their first loss. Who would have thought right. that? So it, it, on every night, you might have some head scratchers in the Southwestern Athletic. Maybe that's why I don't have any hair right now because there's just so many <laughs> head scratching type games. That's why I'm bald right now because I I've scratched it all off. I don't know, but it it does hey, make it exciting. We all have nice hair because <laughs> we. We're wearing the ball, <laughs> yeah. the baldness. But hey, the baldness is in. You got, got, got to love it. Uh, overdue for a timeout. Uh, when we come back, we'll kind of look at um, the games for this Saturday, Monday. Some, some very interesting games, and I, I want to get your, your, your guys' perspective on that. Uh, Black History Month, February, but for Carlos Brown. Black History Month is every month yeah. and every day. What a great history. Both good, tough, but it's still that time of the year. I'm going to try to do a program, a show, with, uh, with the moment, Black History Moment. I got a couple of ideas. Yeah, oh, maybe I'm thinking about a guy that played at Southern University of basketball, coached in the NBA. Mm, Avery. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> of course, he was at Southern University talking to the athletic department. Yeah. Boy, what a great guy. But anyway, we'll take a time out. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. We shall return. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. 
The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Charles, I see you enjoying the human jukebox. The yeah. <laughs> anyway, and I was just looking at the press box. You can see when the band's playing, and I'm looking on the second floor. That's where the media is at. Uh, my normals, uh, the normal section where I sit in. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to determine right now when I'm when I need to leave to go to Mumford Stadium. We are Southern's homecoming opponent, and that's going to be. Awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Oh boy, the, the the chat room during the break. I was looking. Um, if, if you don't mind, let me let me let me read a couple of um, comments. EA says, and we appreciate EA. But guys, this speaks to the lack of true dedication and leadership concerning HBCU basketball. Early afternoon basketball starts a ridiculous for Saturday. You're practically saying for women's basketball, you're not trying to get the gate. Interesting. I guess it started when we were talking about the times, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 moving up. Um, and also, Grandma State and GSU starting at noon. That's uh, the Legacy Classic game. And I think right. that's what they were talking about as well. Oh, boy, that's perfect. A.D. Wheeler Brown has joined us. <laughs> uh, I think he knows a thing or two about scheduling a uh, uh, Wheeler. And, and by the way, I thought about to the Ravens. They let me down. <laughs> yeah. I'm back yeah. off. Yeah. Back they off the let me down. I think they let all of us down, Carlos. Yeah. They let all of us down. I was uh, I was pulling for I was pulling for Lamar. Lamar, I, I, I wanted him to win one, but it, it was not to be. Wasn't meant to and, be. And, Wasn't meant to be. And I'm not one of those guys, Charles, Coach Federal Wheeler, that's saying it's a conspiracy theory. 
no. The, once again, just 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 disappointment. But who am I to uh, talk about the Ravens? Because my NFL team, Coach Petaway. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I hadn't talked to a lot of NFL this season. Yeah. Uh, particularly for the Saints. Oh my. Anyway. Now you need an offensive coordinator. Right. Well, they did make an announcement. Uh the guy from the San Francisco 49ers will be taking over. Oh, really? Okay. I need it. But but guess what? You still have car. Yeah. And a huge <laughs> fat contract. <laughs> and they, they redid the contract. Yeah. So now he's up. But anyway, how do we get on the NFL? Uh, Carlos, you brought up when you, right before you went to commercial, you brought up the fact that this is uh, Black History Month. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, is also taking place this weekend, uh, the National Basketball Coaches Association, this is, uh, this is the weekend for this game is no secret initiative. And what that is, is uh, they, they want you to put these words on the t-shirt. This game is no secret. No secret. And, and I, was a part, I was a part of the initiative to get this started. And, and what this does, the uh, NC2, uh, NABC says, uh, uh, teams from all levels of sports are encouraged to honor the legacy of John McClendon by wearing oh, yeah. t-shirts with these five words on it. This event is an opportunity for players, coaches, and fans to learn about the iconic secret game in which Coach McClendon's North Carolina College for Negroes, now uh, North Carolina Central, defeated Duke in 1944 in a game that had to be played in secret due to the Jim Crow laws. Mm. And so, Carlos, uh, I'm, I'm proud to say that I was on the ground floor for getting this started. And 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 uh, very good. It was thought about Joe Dwyer and his team uh, with College Insider, and it's been an event that the NC two A and the NABC has. Uh, uh, they have endorsed it, and so that's why it's on the regular calendar now. Each year there'll be a weekend to where they ask teams to wear. And last night, uh, I watched Akron and Toledo play. Toledo had their uh, had their shirts on, uh, and and it, and it's great. And I just hope that. The, the squack and the MEAC needs to pay more attention to initiatives like this. Well, and because you just brought that up now, and I, and I, I know you talked, you said you had talked with Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, and, and and we see fans talking about more interaction between the SWAC and the MEAC. Right. Ha, ha, you know, wherever you can place the game at, work that out. Mm -hmm. Now would be a great time to, was that Charles? You didn't? I was no, you said where where we play the game. I said it doesn't matter. I mean, it just 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 play, to have it. To it. play it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tournament style or double header, triple header. Yeah. Pick a place. Now would be a great time to to promote our universities. Yeah. yeah. Ag Willard Brown, <laughs> you could make that happen, correct? <laughs> Definitely, no doubt, no doubt. It's something that that's uh, as Coach Petter was saying is long overdue. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's something that I, I, I would hope that everybody would uh, get on board with and, uh, you know, look look to move that forward, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Very competitive time. We're in the heart of basketball season. Uh, now joined by uh, A.D. Willow Brown. Um, last week, flat basketball recap. Some interesting games, TSU. This is on the women's side over Alabama AM 61 to 55. Coach Petaway, Alabama and them women. It, nah. It's been tough, but hey, they still gotta still gotta compete, sir. Oh yes. <laughs> uh GSU over Mississippi Valley 81 to 71. Uh JSU, that machine over Bethune Cookman, 81 to 65. It was FAMU over all course eight, 60. 56. One thing I'll say about Alcorn, listen to your broadcast, Charles. Um, they, they're, they're there. It's just like, it seems like they're close. I don't know if it's like a slow start or something. It seems like they're always playing catch up. Um, it, it's not that they're getting blown out by 30 points or even 20. There, there's a sense of toughness, but you kind of feel for them. They, they It seems like they're always falling short. But but saying that, 
they may play the best game of the of the season. <laughs> I, I would I would be surprised. And then uh purview and them over um uh, Alabama State 46 to 43. And then I circa UAPB a 74 to 59 victory over Southern University. JSU UAPB Grandma State women. Uh, Willer, to me, that that's the top three teams without yeah. a doubt on, <laughs> on, on, on the women's side. And, and number one, this is without question. Yeah, they all yeah. stand alone right now. There's no doubt about that. You know, nothing. You know, nothing. Nothing negative you can say. You know about those those three programs. They really got it going on, and you know it's something that's been developing over time. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, it seems like much standing the test of time. So, I mean, you can't be can't be upset with that at all, right? Yeah. And, and then, Carlo, that that leads you into today's game, Grambling at Jackson on the women's side. That's going to be that is going to be a doozy. You know, if, oh, if, if that's, any, that's an understatement, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Because I, I I saw that Grammar State women team, and I know it's a rivalry, Charles, but they, man, they were at it from the get go, and they'll need that and then some to defeat Jackson State. But as Muhammad Ali once said, "We're going to shock the world." <laughs> Will we see that? Will Grammar State women shock the world? So, Carlos, is there talk now of separating the men's and women's games going away from the doubleheaders now? Is that the talk? No, oh, uh, that was that was kind of brought up. Um, uh, Charles, I think you uh, – somebody in the chat room brought yeah, it up. Yeah, I, I yeah. think, yeah, okay. Brian Fulford. Okay. Yeah, yeah and, and Charles said, no way, no way, no way. Yeah, the, the women's game is not to the point right now where it can stand alone on its own. I mean, you want to get it to that point, and at some point in time, you got to mm-hmm. go out there and kind of try to push that narrative, if at all possible, you know. But uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know that on our level that it can stand on its on its own right now. You know, a lot of conferences do that those separate day type right. of things. You know, I think the CAA does it, and you know, a couple other. Uh, uh, mid-level conferences do it also mm-hmm. outside of the power five uh, uh ventures yeah but uh i mean i i just don't i just don't know if it's feasible right now from a financial point of view you know to uh to to make that happen yeah i i i would agree however i do remember a time and i'll speak of <laughs> baton rouge Southern women's basketball team, uh, Declan Winfield, I think was playing. Boy, they were so good. It will be interesting to see if they would have separated the time because mm. you, you had you had a better crowd. But I, I, I'm in agreement. Yeah, it it no, you, you keep it as a double header. Now the mm. conversation we had in, in in the previous segments, we kind of talked about the different times. Some fans mm. like like the, the the later games and we brought up the reasons why um some some do like the the earlier starts but uh, as a as a conference uh, they decided to to move up a lot of the you know the games earlier and so that's where we're at now and that's what we have so well you know i, I, that, you I know, do Saturday, think oh, oh go, ahead, go ahead kind of torn but you you don't, you don't necessarily want to take away from the Saturday, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, most, most folk, the only time they get off is on the weekends, that sort of thing. And, you know, a lot of times Saturdays are utilized for shopping and, you know, going to the grocery store and all that sort of thing and stuff. And, you know, if you, if you got a game in the middle of the day, then you're almost forcing a family to choose between going to the game and going to the grocery store. Now, you know, what's going to win out. <laughs> uh, when, when it comes to that, mm-hmm. so you know, so you so that kind of negates having the earlier games, that sort of thing, pretty much. And mm-hmm. you know, so you you almost relegated to 
doing those things like doing during the evening on Saturday, just out of respect to the fact that, you know, a lot of folk that's the only time they have off and, you know, Saturdays mm-hmm. they normally clean in the house and, you know, doing the chores and all that sort of thing and stuff. And, you know, you don't want to force them to choose between coming to a Southern basketball doubleheader at two and four or, you know, waiting until six and eight, you know, that, that sort of thing. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a, a, a catch 22, you know, plus from a AD's point of view, you know, knowing that situation, a lot of times the crowd is going to be more of an evening type crowd. So you're mm-hmm. able to minimize the gate receipts during the evening as opposed to the afternoons. But on the flip side, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you, you want to be mindful of teams that are traveling, you know, and you want them to be able to get back to their home destination or the next destination, you know, at a decent hour. So, you know, you kind of, like I said, you're kind of torn between, you know, the gate receipts and, you know, being mindful of the fact that, you don't want those kids out there on the road late at night trying to get back home and, you know, all that all that sort of thing and stuff. So, you know, you got to to find that, that happy medium there. You yeah. know, a lot of times, like, that is on Saturday and then they played again on Monday, uh, meaning that, you know, Sunday was like your travel day or what have you, you know, but you had a lot of schools that would leave that Saturday game and go straight to the next town, you know, so they can spend the night there in the next town and, you know, get well rested, you know, for, for Monday's game, that sort of thing and stuff. And so, you know, you don't, you, you want to be mindful of the, of the travel, you know, all, all at the same time. So it's kind of like a catch 22, no doubt. Well, Wheeler, I, I saw mm-hmm. something at Bethune Cookman Monday night. I hadn't, I hadn't seen, of course, the game was on TV. The game started early, and they, the women's games at Bethune, at least on Monday, was free. Mm-hmm. At the end of the women's game, they cleaned out the arena mm. and for paying customers for the men's game. I hadn't, that's a new one. Maybe, mm. maybe I've missed it at other places, but I hadn't seen that one before. Usually a doubleheader is a doubleheader. You come in, you got the game, your one price takes care of two games, but they, the women's games, at least on Monday, were free. They cleared out the arena and for paying customers to come back and pay for the men's game at eight o'clock. Oh, wow. wow. Hmm. wow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, now that's, uh, I don't know, that's that's tough there now because to women, me, you, yeah. do, you do value women. your women. You, you got to be careful with that now. You have to be careful with that. I women, think. who is AD then? Reggie Theus? <laughs> It happens to be the men's careful. basketball coach. Okay. You got to be careful with that one now. Mm. You, you, some some people would look at that as devaluing the women's game now. Yeah. You got to be careful with that. I don't know if that's a first. I don't know if that's because it was on television. I don't know. But that was I found that very interesting. Not criticizing or anything. I just found that right. unique and different. I did, cause I, something I hadn't experienced before. Mm. Right. That is, that that's, is that's interesting. Thrill. Well, um, let me let me quickly look at um, the schedule because our next guest. Oh, wait a minute, we'll, we'll just, we can just come back to the schedule after our, our very special guest. He, he's in waiting now. Uh, no, he's no stranger, and we'll, we'll take a time out, but then we'll come back. No stranger to uh, this conference. Um, Southern University has hired a uh, new offensive coordinator. And his name is Coach Mark Frederick. Played at Southern University. He's a native of the state of Mississippi. And um, he's come back to Southern University as an offensive coordinator. Coach Petaway, are you able to join us for the no. next hour? Yeah, no, okay, because you got a 2 p.m. Yeah. game. Okay. Yeah, I, got I, have a two, I have a game, too, at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Uh-oh, yeah. 1 Whoa. o'clock. So, okay. Charles and Coach Petaway. I guess we'll see you next week. Next week, yes. <laughs> next week. Well, uh-huh. I appreciate it and the conversation. Uh, what can Brown and Brown do for you? <laughs> In our number two, which is coming up. Uh, 
we'll we'll speak uh, uh, with our interview, our special guest, Coach Mark Frederick, coming up next. But guys, have a great uh, weekend. Be safe, and yep. we'll see you next Saturday. All righty, that'll work. That'll work. All Charles, right. have a good one, man. All yeah. right. <laughs> Take your time out when we come back. We'll visit with Coach Mark Frederick, new offensive coordinator at Southern University. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell leadership principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Yours truly, Carlos Brown, A.D. Willow Brown. And now our special guest, Coach Mark Frederick, new offensive coordinator at Southern University. Coach Frederick, pleasant good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Carlos Brown Show. Same, man. I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you here. Um, returning to Southern University as the offensive coordinator, the process for that, how did it start for you to make the, uh, make the journey back to Southern University? Well, what, this is my third full stint here at Southern University. Um, never thought it would happen this way on the coast grades, but, hmm, you know, we can't, Stop what the good um what the good law has for you. So I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, sir. So Coach Graves reached out to you. How 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 did that process work out for you? Because I know you you had a family and everything, and mm -hmm. able to, to to come back to to Southern University. Uh, but how how did that 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 conversation get started? 
Man, it's something that has been talked about for years. Um, you know, playing here under Coach Graves and Coach Richardson, uh, just keeping that relationship, um, getting a chance to work together under Coach Richardson. And, you know, I started off as uh, the special team GA running back coach. So Coach Graves took me on his wing and molded me and – I became a coach, and when I got ready to take my first OC job, I actually reached out to Coach Graves and asked him what did he think about that. You know, I reached out to several coaches, but he was one of them. And uh, we always talked about that one day we'll be back together. Didn't think it'll be here. Um, I guess, you know, God blessed him with the job, and um, me and him had some conversations. We talk all the time, if not every day, every other day. And uh, we always just talk not just about football. So this has been a long-lasting relationship that uh, that me and him have. And um, he hit me up, asked me, you know, how is everything going at PV? And I was like, it's going great, man, you know. Um, had a chance to, you know, he was just filling me out, not knowing he had – you know, he did it the proper way, talked to Coach McDowell, asked for uh, permission to talk to me. And next thing I know, hey, man, you, you know, what you think about coming back home? I was like, uh, you know, man, what you talking about? And <laughs> <laughs> next yeah. thing you know, he was like, I want to interview you to be my OC. I was like, uh-oh. And it kind of got started from there. Um, a lot of people thought, that I was here already and stuff like that. I was still at PV working, uh, recruiting yeah. and things of that nature. And like he say, uh, you know, I listened to some shows. He did it the right way. You had to go through the proper protocols and stuff like that. And fortunately, hey, I'm here. And with that <laughs> being said, there is, and I'm just saying, that, and Wheeler, we talk about it. Um, it's a, it, it's a lot of pressure nowadays, no matter what institution yet. And, and by you playing at Southern Verse, you know, um, once you accepted the position to be offensive coordinator, it's like everybody wants a piece of you. So with that being said, um, have you had a chance to just kind of, and I know it's early on, kind of look at from an offensive standpoint, what's coming back? Um, I, I think we text each other earlier. The quarterback room is, it, it, for some reason, we always talk about that one first. But right. uh, have you had a chance to kind of look into the room just to see what you're going to have to work with? Yes, yes. Uh, I've been doing, you know, my homework and getting to be around the guys now. Uh, Noah, you know, he, you know, he's a pretty good player. You know, got some things we got to iron out with him, uh, Mr. Wood. And Mr. Uh, T set, so I didn't have a chance to talk with him. Uh, we haven't talked nothing about football yet, so uh, mm -hmm. just to get you know, just getting a chance to know them awesome. personally. Mm -hmm. So that's where it starts. At uh, I was raised and taught that if you want a guy to play hard for you, you got to show him that you love him first. Then he'll you know he'll run through that wall for you. So that's where I'm at. I'm in the process of just uh, setting up some meetings with him one on one, just to talk to him and fill him out. So it sounds like Willer, he's talking about building, here's the term we use, building relationships mm -hmm. and getting to, 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 to know the, the young men. Um, and then that helps you put together, I think, in my opinion, um, put together a part of the plan offensive, what, you, what you're going to do. Um, is it too quick to ask you, Coach Frederick, uh, uh, about any ideas you have schematically or uh, uh, what – you would like to accomplish offensively for a scheme wise. And I'm, I'm sure perhaps, you, of course, you have to talk with the head coach and other offensive coaches, but do you kind of have an idea of kind of where you want to go for the right. Southern University offense identity? Um, well, to be honest with you, um, you have to address the talent that you have. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be physical up front. We're going to uh, establish a run game, and we're going to take what the defense gives us. We're not going to force anything. Talking with some of the guys, they were like, Coach, man, 
you love to run the football. I'm like, yeah, if you give me the run, why not? Mm. And if you look around it, if you want to be a championship program, you got to be able to run the football. You got to be able to dominate the line of scrimmage, whether offensively or defensively. And uh, we will throw the football. You know, I showed him a graphic. I didn't make the graphics. It was something online that at my previous job, the quarterback was in the top five of all HBCU quarterbacks. So if he finished the season in the top five, evidently we was doing something in the passing game. So hmm. we'll throw the ball. If you give us the pass, we're going to pass it. But uh, I believe in being efficient, and I believe in playing complementary football. Um, controlling the time of possession, getting first downs, and scoring touchdowns. That's going to be the name of this offense. Um, if you look up the stats from last year, it's two stats that a lot of people don't look at, but if you pay attention to them, those were the two stats that made the difference in the season. And that was, uh, if you look in conference only, third down conversions, FAMU was one, we were two. Um, in red zone offense, FAMU was one, we were two. What else you have to do? So. We scored hmm. enough points, you know what I'm saying, when we needed to. Uh, didn't have a year that we had that previous year. The previous year, we averaged 30 points a game, and we were at home. This past season, I think we averaged around 24 points, and we was in the championship game. So, hey, we're going to do what it takes to win, and uh, we're not going to change football. We're not going to change the way, you know, all this or that. No, we're going to play football. We're going to play sound football and disciplined football. And that's what we're going to hang our hat on. Well, Will, is, Will <laughs> Brown is a former offensive <laughs> lineman. So I, I, I thought he was going to smile a little bit more when he said about running football. But go ahead, Will. Well, you definitely want to run it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about that. But uh, I'm a big proponent of what you what you were talking about, Coach, in terms of mm -hmm. taking what the, what the defense gives you. And, uh, and definitely being physical up front. I mean, there, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I guess my question uh, would be uh, relationship as it pertains to the other coaches on the offensive staff. Are you familiar with those guys or been familiar with those guys, have some work history with those guys, uh, you know, know their strengths and weaknesses and all that sort of thing? Man, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna start with the quarterback coach with Coach Titan. Uh, I'm from Mississippi, so you already know how that go, Carlos. Yeah. You know, <laughs> everybody growing up, it was during that time. It was him and Jerry Rice. Uh, then moving forward, you know, it was Steve McNair. So you kept up with those guys, and over the years, we've always talked, had a chance to interview them a couple of times trying to get a part of the staff, things just didn't work out, and bam, look, we're here, and now we're getting a chance to work together. So that worked out. So I know him. I know of him. Uh, he knows me, and looking forward to that. And uh, Coach Nivens, man, had a chance to coach me uh, during our championship run when I was a player. And then the crazy thing, I was on the staff when we hired Coach Nivens to be the old line coach after Coach Smith um, left. So mm -hmm. then had a chance to work with him here, had a chance to work with him at Pine Bluff, came back uh, to PV. Coach Dooley hired in there, had a chance to work with him, know him all so well. Um, and now we're back together again here at Southern University. So I know him very well. Uh, coach Barrea, the receiver coach, haven't had a chance to work with him over the years, getting to know him. They were at Graham, that school up north, as we say. But, yeah, had a chance to talk with him, been knowing him a while, never, you know. So some things came into place to where I'm not so unfamiliar with the guys. So, yeah. Uh, Vince with Coach Mark Frederick, uh, new offensive coordinator for Southern University. Um I'm, go I'm going back to uh, maybe the quarterback room. Well, before then, mm -hmm. um, a question from the chat room. Uh, Adrian says, Mark, will you use that fullback and the I formation <laughs> of being a former fullback at Southern University? 
Um, I, and I tell you what. I tell you what. We got to find one. Uh, I'm not sure if he had one on the team, but we're going to find one. Uh, I I think they're all but obsolete, man. But if you look up at the um at the 49ers, number 44, fullback, very instrumental in that offense. So uh, at my previous job, we had a fullback, H-back guy. Some guys was, you know, like, hey, man, you got all them running backs, but the fullback got all the touchdowns. Hey. It's your job to score, you know, when you get your opportunity. If if we down there at the two-yard line, one-yard line, you know, I'm not a big fan of quarterback sneaks, but I am a big fan of that belly dive. So <laughs> it's just like the old touch push. So if we can find one, which I am looking for one, we will use one. And, by the way, Adrian Crook was a fullback and a pretty good one in high school, if I'm not mistaken, a baker. <laughs> High school, but but you know, offenses now, it, you know, spread everybody out. It, it's kind of mm-hmm. evolved. You know, the I formation back in the day it was very Coach Richardson when you played, yep. but now yep. it's, uh, I guess it's not feasible. Man. It's not feasible, and also on this show you get a lot of questions about a uh, tight end. You know, being involved in the offense. Um, uh, kind yeah. of a lost art. But running yeah. backs involved in in, mm-hmm. in 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 the offense and in the passing plays. W- what are your thoughts of, about that? Those perspectives, uh, the tight end involved, and, right. and, and right. kind of a vertical passing game, attacking down the field in the middle of the field. Uh, we definitely. I, if I'm not mistaken, they got two or three already here. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not exactly sure. I really haven't had a chance to, you know look at the whole breakdown of the team yet but understood we will use tight ends we will use tight ends um definitely a lost art as far as a defense paying attention to him you put a tight end on the Mm -hmm. field now he's probably gonna be wide open uh Mm -hmm. so we're gonna we are gonna use tight ends and i would love to have one that has the ability to flex out as well Mm -hmm. as line up and block so now he don't even have to lead the field. So um, we will have that in this offense. And talking about a vertical passing game, you know, I don't like bringing up the pass, but we were very efficient. And then we were probably ranked in the top of the conference in yards per pass. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're going to spin it. We're going to throw it around the yard a little bit. Mm-hmm. This this Mark Frederick, new offensive coordinator at Southern University, uh, simply returning uh, mm-hmm. back to Southern University. Um, because you're moving, you have experience, played in the conference, coached in the conference. As far as defenses in the conference, you're familiar with them. What is the, probably the biggest difference you see as far as facing defenses in, in, in this this conference well to be honest with you uh the defenses have evolved man they have evolved and they they playing some good ball a lot of guys act like you know oh man you know the conference was down last year offenses didn't score a lot of points well you got defensive coaches getting paid and they coach too mm-hmm. so you're getting them big hybrid guys that can run and they're causing problems for offenses. So, um, you know, offenses used to have the advantage. You put four and five wide on the field, and the defense don't have guys to match up anymore. Well, that's not the case. Um, you know, they are recruiting and evolving on that side of the ball as well. So, you know, I'm kind of old school. You got to hang your hat on something. And when in doubt, the big boys up front, they roll up them sleeves and we move forward. Mm-hmm. Back, back, back to uh, to the running game. Willer, if you have a question, <laughs> shoot it in. Come on, you're yeah. the offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have enough of them, that's for sure. Coach, that's what's, true. Uh, what's, the, what's the biggest uh, recruiting need for you guys right now on, on the offensive side of the ball, as you said? Just coming in and, you know, having a chance to talk with Coach Nibbins and stuff, you always want O-linemen. You always want O-linemen. So 
Um, skill guys, you pretty much can get them because, you know, everybody wants the ball. So you can get them pretty much any time. But it's kind of hard to find linemen. So we're going to uh, recruit some more. Um, you know, probably not going to sign all we want for signing day, but we will keep recruiting and we'll get some more guys in here up front, definitely. Uh, mm. You know, you can't have enough depth. Can't have mm. enough depth up front. Mm. Injuries do happen. So, and then it's going to be a long season. So, okay. you got to get some more guys up front. Okay. What's the projection for signing day? Any, any this, set number that you guys are looking at right now? I'm not 100% sure. Just getting in, uh, you know, just talking with Coach Graves and the other coaches, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many we're going to sign, but I know we're not done on the offensive side of the ball. So, Right. And, and you know, one of the things is, you know, you have the early signing period. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they kind of panic if you don't. Mm-hmm. get a lot of players in but there's still the traditional day which is coming up uh very shortly and then a lot of times as you stated you can recruit past oh, yeah. that big signing mm-hmm. day you know yes. uh, may and, and then for us we've asked several coaches and it, it'd be interesting to see what you have to say with the transfer portal you know it's uh that's an option juco mm-hmm. and then high school it, mm-hmm. it seems to be you got to have that balance as far yeah. as that recruitment between the transfer portal, high school, JUCO. Your, your that, thoughts on that, Coach for, for oh, a, go ahead, go ahead, That February signing day, Carlos, is more of a fan type thing uh, mm-hmm. for us on our level than it is anything else. You know, because we all know, you know that you know, we, we normally wait and see what drops down, that sort of thing. And, you know, the, the kid who thought he was great and thought he was going, uh, uh, power five or what have you, you know, now he's had an opportunity to wake up and and smell a coffee. And, uh, you know, we're able to, you know, talk to that kid after that signing day if things haven't transpired. So, you know, for us, mm-hmm. for those that are knowledgeable of the process, mm-hmm. you know, we know that the bulk of our work is going to come after the signing day, you know, and, and you know, not necessarily get all hyped up for, for the signing day. But the fans like it, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you want to try to throw them a bone or two uh, when you can, you know, something for them to talk about, that sort of thing. But for those in the in the grind and the in the heat of the battle, you know we we all know what side to to put the butter on the bread. So you know we just kind of look at it like that. I think. In other words, Coach Frederick and Willen, you still got to work. You still got to develop players, and and the hard work starts after the the, the right. signing day. Albeit, <laughs> albeit, Will, I will say it's the bloodline, the recruiting. It's a bloodline mm-hmm. of your program, but mm-hmm. the point well taken. Yeah. So the biggest thing for me, um, and again, just coming up on the coach Richardson, uh, working with guys like him, uh, just over the years, man, I understand one thing. And I kind of came up with a little deal at the last place I was at. We're going to recruit. We're going to retain and we're going to develop players. Okay, Uh, everybody get caught up in the stars. Uh, Oh, he this star, he that star. Oh, yeah. And I'm not bragging or nothing like that. That's fine. If he's that and we can get him, fine. If not, that's what I get paid to do. I get paid to coach. Mm -hmm. And it's my job to develop you into the player that I that we need here at Southern University. Uh, We're not going to get ready made players no more. Uh, the transfer portal, man, it is – it's a catch-22 if you ask me. Mm-hmm. You taking somebody else's headache or problem or something, he's leaving for a reason. Now, I'm not saying everybody because, you know, everybody have different, you know, situations. But right. if we can re- set up a base with some high school players um, and some junior college players. And, I, you know, we did a breakdown of, of the roster – um, after the championship game and stuff, man, we looked at it in 21 before Coach Dooley left. 
everybody that played in that championship game, 90% were homegrown. Okay. They had been in the program. Last year, we did the same breakdown. Probably 98% of the offense were homegrown kids. So high school and junior college. Yeah, you're going to plug a transfer reporter guy here or there, but a lot of times them guys don't want to be coached. A lot of times them guys are looking for the same thing they was getting at that BCS level, and that's that stipend and cost of living uh, money. And being on the HBCU level, we just don't have it. So I want mm-hmm. some hungry guys that want to come, work, work hard, and let's win some football games all while – earning your degree mm-hmm. last i mean in the fall i think we graduated 20 guys so mm-hmm. them was guys who came bought into the process they didn't look at the end goal they bought into the process okay go to class go to study hall lift weights do all of the things you're supposed to do and in the end result they had an opportunity to play for a championship coach can you repeat that again what was it? I, I want to write this one down. About a re- <laughs> retain. You want to recruit them, you want to retain them, and you want to develop them. I got it this time. See, <laughs> Co- Will, you go to class regardless. <laughs> and, 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 and you know, I, I kind of like that because we kind of often get uh, in this show, get into the transfer order. Uh, one of my other guests, Charles Edmund, he, he basically always said, and correct me if I'm wrong, Willard, because I'm not always right. Mm-hmm. Um, the transfer portal, it's the way of the world now, and you might as well get used to it. I'm paraphrasing basically yeah. what he's saying. You know, I'm, 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 I'm kind of old school and new school, but I, I understand, Coach, what you're saying, and Willard. Mm-hmm. The days of that traditional way is not 100% anymore, but when you get players, regardless, yep, yeah. you recruit them, you got to yeah. retain them, and you got to develop them. And well, even and, even those kids coming out of the portal, Carlos, you, you still got to develop them. You right. Know? That's they're, correct. They're, yeah. They're, mm-hmm. they're by no means the finished product. Yeah. Right. And I've always been of the mindset that, you know, for 85 to close to 90% of those kids in the portal, there's a reason why they're in there, you know, that ain't necessarily a, a great reason. You know, some may be looking for another opportunity to play or something like that. But, you know, for a great majority of those kids, there's some, you know, disciplinary issues maybe floating around out there. You know, kid maybe didn't, didn't want to work hard or, you know, uh, uh, you know, all kind of reasons why. You know they yeah. they want they want to move on, and uh, no, you know, no. I that is the way Coach Frederick looked at it. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of times you picking up somebody else's headache. You know, and then do you really really want to want to do that? You know, but you know you got to be able to develop those kids. A lot of those kids coming to you, they're not the finished product by any means. You know, yeah. I mean, they may have a year or two under their belt in somebody else's system or or something like that, you know, but they still got to come in and get used to your way of doing things, your way of coaching them. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just a bigger gamble rolling the dice on the portal as it is a high school kid. And I'd much rather roll my dice in in the high school kids' direction, you know, because at least I think I I have a better opportunity to mold and shape and develop that kid and develop that mindset more so than anything else. You know, a kid that's been in college a couple years, Carlos, ain't much you can tell that kid, you know, in terms of, you know, getting things done or doing things the right way or, you know, things of that nature. So... I mean, it's it's a it's it's a toss up, no doubt. I think the biggest thing of that with the transfer portal, everybody expect you just to be able to go in the portal and get guys, and you come in and win right now. Mm-hmm. And you know, because of job security and stuff, like Coach Richardson, he was here what seventeen years. You really don't get to see that anymore mm-hmm. because of everybody want the right now. You know what I'm saying? Results. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. If you want me to recruit your high school kids and retain them and develop them, you got to at least give me a chance to see them through their senior year. Mm-hmm. You got to at least give a coach a chance to go to two or three recruiting cycles, mm-hmm. you know, before you say, oh, well, you know, he's not doing a good job. So, um, but that's the way of life. You know, that's a part of the mm-hmm. world. We're not going to turn a kid away because he's in the portal. Does he fit what we need? Does he fit the program? Yeah. You know, is it what the head coach is looking for? Does everything align with what we're trying to accomplish? So things of that nature plays a huge uh, factor. And, of course, you always want high-character kids. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want guys out here causing problems. Two o'clock in the morning, you're getting phone calls. So, mm-hmm. no, we want guys to do it the right way on and off the field. So right. that's – that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, mm-hmm. that that word I like to use. You got to have some balance with mm-hmm. it. And yeah, in, in the traditional day, yeah, you get that kid as a freshman. He matriculates through the program, degree in hand, and he got better athletically because he got mm-hmm. developed. Those were the glory days. But now we're nil transfer portal. Yep. That's another story. Coach, recruiting wise, mm-hmm. I, I know you're a good recruiter because uh, we used to see you coming into Louisiana, getting players. Um, the the talent wise, Louisiana not as big, of course, population wise as Texas, but oh, so rich talent. It's always interesting to ask a coach. When I say local, am I talking about just a local city, or am I talking about a geographical area like the state. What are your thoughts on that? Well, definitely. Um, we, me personally, and I'm pretty sure some more coaches on the staff, we consider Louisiana our backyard. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. not just a local local school. So anywhere in Louisiana that's local. Um, then you got your surrounding areas: Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, Arkansas, Georgia. Florida, I'm pretty sure we can, you know, touch all of those places. So that won't be a problem for us recruiting a kid. Kid up in Tennessee, um, if if we can get up there to him, yes, we want him. So all of that is part of it. California, anywhere we got alumni and stuff of that nature. Goes <laughs> great. <laughs> Still getting ball. Hey, he busted oh, in on me, but yeah. Anywhere they got a player, we want it, especially if he fits what we do. So it won't be an area that we can't, you know, what well, coach don't come here. Well, we might not be able to come there, but do I have a connection in that area that can help me recruit that kid? Because it's all about building relationships, man. If mom and dad trust you with their son, you know, then you got a shot. Um, that's the biggest thing I find out these days. You know, if you can get them on board with what you're trying to do, then you got to shot at uh, recruiting a kid and getting them in the boat. Well, we've asked different questions of you, different uh, perspectives and topics. But, you know, to make the move, you had to talk to a very important person. And that was uh, the wife and, 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 and the family. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the time, they, 100% of the time, they're going to be in support of the family what were their thoughts about coming back to well, louisiana <laughs> well i met my wife here at southern university so mm-hmm. she's from lafayette this is home so her family is here so it was pretty much a a go-go so uh the kids the two you know the two in the house they were my son, he is seven. Uh, at first, he was like, Dad, I don't want to leave Texas. Uh, you know, he play on a mm-hmm. little peewee team. He, you know, he's golfing. He's doing everything he want to do there. I was like, well, you're going to have to learn to do it in Louisiana. So he enjoyed, you know, he'll be closer to home. I'm a country boy. I love to hunt. He see now he'll get a chance to go hunting more and stuff like that. Changed him over in a heartbeat. So he was happy. Um, he asked, look, he called Coach Graves on FaceTime. 
He said, Kobe, I got a question. Coach Gray said, what's up? Say, will I be able to run out on the field? Coach Gray told him yes. So now every time he called me, remember, he told me I can run on the field. So, hey, I, that's be awesome, man. A word is a bond. And besides yeah. that, toot our horns. The, <laughs> the, the culture and the food. We got to get Wheeler back down to, to, to Louisiana. Yeah, I know. Just, just the food itself, Wheeler, it, it's worth the price of admission. I know it is. I know it is. <laughs> so yeah. with, with that being said, uh, I always like to wrap up a, a conversation with, with Coach. Anything you would like to say uh, to the Jaguar Nation, HBCU Nation, SWAC Nation, in, in, in your closing comments? Oh man, uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, so you know, hey, it started here. So what you know, what better place to try to do something special and take the next step in my career uh, with being at home? Uh, we're gonna put a product on the field that the Jaguar Nation can be happy with. Trust me. Um, it might not be. Like they tell me, you know what I'm saying? You can't please everybody, but at mm -hmm. the end of the day, when the great scorekeepers come back, they want to know, did you get that W? They don't care how you got it. You ain't going to see highlights in the uh, win column. You ain't going to see none of that. We want to win, and uh, we want to win now. Like Coach Gray say, it's the Gray's edition on the championship mission, and that's what mm -hmm. we're going to roll with. That's what we're striving for, um, and it's team now. Together, everyone achieves more, no other way. So, go Jags. Yes, sir. And, and, and one special request. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm not a coach, and I think I know it all, but I don't. I, 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 they tell me about that every time. You don't know it all. But is it possible that I could come and if I see some things, my, one of my favorite things is tight end being involved in a pack in the middle. Would you at least let me tell that to you before you turn me down and say, I'm the offensive coordinator. I know what I'm doing. But I would no. just love to be in that room one time just to offer no. input. i tell you what. And like I said, I don't like bringing up the past. And I don't like telling, you know, everybody business. They might not want it there. But open door policy. Anytime you want to come by, come by and see me. Again, I don't know it all. I didn't invent football, and I don't claim to know it. Oh, um, crazy thing, man. Since I've been in coaching, and some people might think it's crazy, I used to call a certain coach, and I'm just leaving it at that. I call a coach and ask him every week. I would reach out to these coaches. Hey, man, what did you like against so and so? What did you know? What did you see offensively that gave you, you know, this and that? And that's relationships, and that's you know, trying to always help. You know, I want, I want to win. I want to win. So I don't have a big ego. I don't have, you know, stuff in my way. My pride. I put it to the side. Hey, coach, y'all put up these many points against them. What you thought? What did you see? Give it to me so I can try to help my team win. And of course, when we got ready to play each other, we didn't really talk that week, but hey, that's just a part of it. Yeah. But, uh, it's always good to have connections and stuff, man. And again, mm -hmm. somebody walking by the street may, may be able to tell me, hey, coach, you know, on second down, man, you, I saw that, you know, something. You never mm -hmm. know. So, no, my ears are always open. I'm open mm -hmm. to any ideas, and if we can make it fit into what we do and it help us, come on, man, I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I I actually like that, but, um, you know, it's very interesting. We see things that maybe others don't see and vice versa, but I appreciate you uh, coming mm -hmm. on the show because you're just getting in, trying to get settled. And um, for, for coming on the show, we really appreciate it. We'll invite you back again. Um, uh, much blessings to you and your family. And uh, welcome back, Coach. Welcome back. Thank you, man. Uh, anytime. All righty. Have a great weekend. And go Jags. You do the same. Go Jags. <laughs> All righty. Thanks a lot. That was Coach uh, Mark Frederick 
offensive coordinator at Southern University, uh, spending some time with us. And you know, Will is always interesting. Coaches are human beings mm -hmm. as well. They have likes, dislikes, strengths, weaknesses, and you know, their profession is coaches. And it's awarding, but it's also a, a, a tough, it's a it's a tough, tough profession right now. Because and, and, and you know, sometimes we forget about that, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Blow, you know, forgets all about that. You know, the average fan kind of you know, kind of pushes that to the side, that sort of thing, and think that, you know, these guys should have a one-track mind or, you know, everything yeah. funnel in one direction, that sort of thing. And, you know, what, what we all got to understand, like you said, they're human too. You know, they got feelings like everybody else, albeit they know that they have to be a little bit more thick-skinned than, you know, regular Joe Blow or what have you. But uh, you know, we, we gotta be we gotta be mindful of those things also, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, we appreciate his time. Uh we'll take a, a quick time out, 1243 Central Time, 143 your time. Will are, are, are you you're okay now, right? With with, with the Ravens, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 back off the ledge. I'm back oh off the ledge. no, no, yeah. <laughs> no. You know, for the true football fan, Carlos, there are only two seasons. That's football season and getting ready for football season. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm shifting over to the mode of getting ready for the next football season. So, yeah, yeah. whatever. But, I, but it's okay. It's okay. Well, I, I, I love football. I like to win in everything, basketball, baseball. When we come back after timeout, we'll uh, kind of give you the schedule uh, for uh, – uh, wait wait a minute. What is that? Carlos secretly preparing his book of trick plays to hand over to Coach Fred. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Not me. I, I, you know, in, in that question, I'm, I'm kind of old school, but I'm new school too. I just think. <laughs> From a non-coaching perspective, the middle of the field has been wide open for 30 years in the conference. Running backs involved in the offense, tight ends, and I believe in uh, having those medium routes. You can have those slants, a combination, but I also believe in what, Wheeler? Balance yes. on, on offense. It's like a boxer. If I could take you out with either hand, don't you have more to prepare for? That's true. That's true. No. That's true. Trick, actually, trick plays, I'm not really big on trick plays. But attack <laughs> in the middle of the field, being <laughs> vertical sometimes. Hey, I love it. I'm no coach. It's, I'm just who I am. We'll take a time out. When we come back, there'll be more of the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Since 2002, <laughs> Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowerment J-A-X. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot -E -E com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. 
Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High-quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. bands on <laughs> the commercial I, I also admin great great piece by the fam you uh marching 100 uh will i also like the um uh, wildcats marching band for uh, bcu of course the sonic boom of the south the oh yeah so the sound of dynamite i had my niece when she was about five six seven years old asked me about why does the HBCU bands have those unique names? Yeah. I, I simply couldn't answer her but this way. It's just something that we do. Yeah. We, yeah. We're dramatic and, and that adds extra to it. The well, ocean of soul. Well, you oh, know, when you when just... you when you when you're good, you kind of throw a little theme to it. You know, not unlike there you go. You know, Much the, better the, said. Self like the Blue Death Defense or the Air Raid Offense or whatever it is you want to call it, you know. So those bands coming up with little nicknames for themselves kind of, you know, makes them stand out and makes them stand uh, a little bit above, you know, the, the average band. Well said. Well said. Schedule. Uh, matter of fact, um, GSU, JSU and Grambling State, uh, getting it on right now today. Also, and this is uh, uh, women and men's action, Alabama State uh, hosting uh, Bethune-Cookman University, Alcorn State and Southern, of course, coming up. Boy, that, that's a big one. Uh, Alabama and them and FAMU, Mississippi Valley State and uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff and another big one, Prairie View and them versus TSU. That's a rival Mm. Uh, a rivalry game that mm -hmm. that will be big as well. And then Monday night, Prairie View and them and UAPB, Alabama and them. Uh, thank you, uh, Jackson State over Grandma State, twenty nine to twenty six. Um, Alabama and them and Bethune Cookman Monday, Alcorn State hosting Grandma State University, Alabama State hosting FAMU and Jackson State hosting uh, Southern University. Also, we got about nine minutes left, and um, I, I want to put up, and you kind of see the uh, Southern University softball schedule, and then the baseball schedule, baseball and softball right around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, simply for Southern University, um, it, it's something to prove. You're, you're doggone right, because <laughs> uh, they've had much success, but as of late, Kind of fell short of uh, that that success. Hmm. Um, so um, one uh, series of note, of course, you got your regular uh, SWAC conference season, but also starting off the season, you know, you got a couple of classics, and then one in particular, um, I believe, uh, Andre Dawson Classic. You're going to have Southern University, of course, FAMU. North Carolina A and T. Hmm. How about that, Willer? <laughs> Aggies in the house. Yeah, and of course, FAMU defending swag baseball 
champions. They're there as well. And then, of course, you can't forget about Bethune Cookman, Jackson State. Uh, now I'm talking about some of the conference schools that um, I think Jackson State and Southern have something to prove this year. Can they get back up to standards? Texas Southern are always tough. Prairie View and them has improved a lot as well. Now, mm -hmm. softball schedule, and I must admit, I, I've got to get out and get to see some more softball and invite the uh, softball coach on. Um, but as you can see, the schedule there, uh, tough non conference schedule but i guess that's the way it should be willer yeah should be that way yeah. and it pre prepares you but now we're not going to talk about like in football or <laughs> basketball where you play all of those guarantee games these are not guarantee games for softball and baseball but it should be the same goal as in football basketball to prepare you for the conference uh, mm -hmm. schedule. So there, there's the schedule of uh, both softball and Southern University uh, baseball for 2024 uh, season. Thanks, Roy, uh, uh, for that. Um, Willer, if we recap quickly on this show, you know, we talk swag basketball. Um, we have, because of the discussion, with Coach Petaway, Charles, and, and Willa Brown. Uh, Jackson State women, they have a complete, complete hole on, on the women's side as far as uh, swag basketball. Uh, we talked about maybe two through the rest to see where those those teams will end up. On the men's side, you got literally seven, eight teams uh, vying for that regular season championship. So, uh, competitiveness is uh, also something that we've talked about uh, mm -hmm. and on this show. Of course, we uh, interviewed, uh, had a discussion, conversation with Coach Mark Frederick, offensive coordinator uh, for Southern University as well. And of course, um, Charles and Coach Petaway had to, uh, they got some broadcast uh, to do on their local uh, network. So they left us after our uh, one, and we didn't get a chance to talk uh, specifically with Coach Petaway, uh, his top five in the NBA. So we'll save that for another time because I know we'll do more on that football side. But um, Super Bowl coming up, San Francisco and Kansas City. Some are just overdosed with Kansas City. <laughs> they got it done. They're they're in the Super Bowl. I'm gonna tell you now. I'm pulling for San Francisco. Hmm. Uh, I I think you know for me, Carlos, because I don't have a dog in the fight now. You know, I'm I'm just looking for a a great game. You know, I'm I'm looking for the uh, the competitive battles up front. You know, I've always been, you know, heavy into the line play, that sort of thing. And, you know, so I, I just want to see a good football game, you know, regardless of, you know, who comes out on top. You know, I just want to see knockdown drag out. I want to see, you know, both teams trying to push that ball up and down the field, that sort of thing. You know, I want to see some good hits, some good head knocking, you know. And as long as that's happening, then, then I'm, I'm a happy camper with whomever may win. If I didn't know any better, I'd say, did anybody ever tell you you were you you're an offensive lineman at old school? Will, <laughs> Will if if you were offensive coordinator, I I bet you it would it would be run on first down, run on second, and maybe if it's third and short, <laughs> you you may pass. Am I correct, or or you're balanced? If you are an offensive coordinator, I, I will be a balanced guy, Carlos. But we got to meet our quota now. Ain't no doubt about that. You know, and my, 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 quarter. <laughs> you got to establish a new line of scrimmage to every play. Yeah, oh, so wow. definitely got to do that. There's no way fans and bust about that. And there's nothing more demoralizing, Carlos, than to push that man off the ball and, you know, and, and beat that defense down the field, that sort of thing. Just grind it and run it and. You know, I mean, you just take so much steam out of the opposing team when you do that, you know. And so, you know, if you want to deflate 
and attitude or something real quick, run that ball down his throat. You know, I mean, if if you throw an eighty yard touchdown pass or something, you know, the defense say, "Oh, well, you know, you got me on that one." That's that's a luck shot, that sort of thing. <laughs> when you grind it out eighty yards, when you grind it out eighty yards and punch that thing in the in the end zone, then the defense says, mm, "I think it's going to be a long day today," and that's what Boy, you want. Time of possession. If Willa Brown's <laughs> office coordinator, you 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 may not get <laughs> your office may not get before five possessions of the football. <laughs> but, but so it eight counts, eight huh? I'll tell you that. You better put eight in the box. That's all oh, I got. Oh my goodness. <laughs> also on the show, it was an interesting conversation. We were kind of talking about the basketball games. And this happens on this show sometimes. We go into another topic because of a, a another topic for us the time and, and the times of the games and then uh, you know doing commercial breaks i'm able to peep into um there's a chat room and um, uh, some interesting conversation about those times and uh, uh our colleague dr uh Cavill, he made a great point and paraphrase it here um times and schedule may work a certain way in houston Baton Rouge, because you're looking at the uh, demographic. Houston's a huge city. A lot more things to do. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little different than in Lorma, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. A very small community. You know, Jackson, mm, I guess we could say mid-sized. Baton Rouge, mid-sized. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at Pine Bluff in a smaller city. And, you know, Mississippi Valley Green. So you, you have to take those things in mind. But mm -hmm. the point is still too, as an AD and, uh, and you know, as, as an athletic department, it's always good to just kind of revisit things and look at them and just see mm -hmm. what, what works best. We saw some people talk about, hey, those late games were better for me because I think you even brought it up. On Saturday, sometimes mm -hmm. I've got, I got a, a block of time set up where I'm doing this and that that I can't do in the regular season mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. or, or during the week, shall I say. Mm hmm and so when those games are at 12 or 1 p.m., it does knock out mm -hmm. a portion of those that can come to the game. Me personally, I always, particularly when I was younger, Willa, I loved those those late games, those 5.30 mm -hmm. to 7.30. You know, what am I going to do on the Saturday afterwards? In my 20s, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get into some activity. Mm-hmm. But as I get older, you know, that basketball game, that entertainment is enough for me. Then I go home and, and relax in a private room and have an adult beverage or two and relax and wind down. And Carlos, you hear from alums that say, well, you know, the, the evening games cause me to have to get back home late if I'm traveling from out of town. Mm -hmm. You know, then I'm mm -hmm. on the road late at night, that sort of thing, as opposed to, you know, the after afternoon game, you know, I can get out of get back out of town by four or five o'clock and I'm back home, but you know, but by eight, nine, that sort of thing. And so, you know, you'll hear it from an administrative point of view. You'll hear all sides. You know, so you know, you wanna be uh mindful, you wanna be mm -hmm. able to adapt and adjust. You know, but, you know, bottom line being, while, you know, you feel for your fandom and all that sort of thing, what's best for your kids? You know, what, what, what's, what's best for your student athletes? You know, let's make sure that we have them first and foremost in mind. And then everybody else kind of trickles in behind that. You know, well, so. On that note, that's perfect because as much as I've talked about in the different um, perspectives on this, that's the best way to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. The best thing for the student athletes. Um, basketball, uh, I was waiting for the graphic, on the network, and there we go. Uh, as you can see, that looks like, uh, who is that, Willer? Savannah State? Benedict, I believe. Benedict, yep. 2 p.m. on the Black College Sports Network at 2 p.m. Also, uh-oh, that looks like Allen. 
And yeah. come on, help me out there, Willer. Uh, Everwater. <laughs> no. Everwater. <laughs> uh, uh, wait a minute, Roy. Who is that? Oh well, <laughs> but, but they saw that would be Edward Waters and Allen. Okay, well, I gotta <laughs> do my work. Thank you, that Roy, on my S I A C. <laughs> but the point is, on the Black Car Sports Network, HBCU basketball at its finest. Well, want to thank all of our guests. Roy, producer today show. We got to get out of here. Let the conversation uh, continue. Join us next Saturday at 11 a.m. for another edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Until next time, as always, peace and God bless. Thank you.